All right, class, uh, welcome. And we are welcoming back Roger Palmer from what's on Disney plus.com. And he spoke to us um, last year and we talked about Disney plus and what Disney plus had done over the course of its first year of existence, first year in about a month or two. Um, and also how it performed during that first year, how it performed during the pandemic. Now that we're about a month or uh, half a month removed from Disney Plus Day, um, we, we're going to check back in and see kind of how Disney Plus did in 2021. Um, it's still um, doing very, very well. The, the subscriptions are still coming in. Um, they, they've, they've slowed a little bit and, and nobody would know better than, than Roger because he keeps up and he's very plugged in with all of this. So um, we're going to talk to him. And for those of you who um, don't or weren't able to watch or listen to Roger's first visit, uh, Roger's going to give a quick recap of kind of his fandom and how he started what's on disneyplus.com. So welcome back, Roger. Thanks for, for coming back for a second time. I thank you very much for welcoming me back. It was it was kind of one of the things of like yeah yeah it's good um but yeah and I was just like yeah, anytime and, and especially now like I'm just I'm just in my little office all the time like hey, I get to speak to somebody <laughs> it's, it's good yeah so I've been doing uh, what's on Disney Plus now for we just did our third anniversary um so it's actually about three and a half years since I started the website um yeah that is long before Disney Plus existed I was a lot earlier on it and before that I did um websites like Disney Kingdom and Vinimation Kingdom where we were following like Disney vid video games, Disney merchandise Dis and movies and bits and pieces. So I've been kind of doing it now I think nearly about 10 years um, and even before that I mean I've been sort of tinkering about with websites since I was a teenager kind of thing since when the internet first came out and um, back at college and stuff. So I've been doing it for a long time um, but now yeah it's this is pretty much just what we're doing all the time. And that's my dogs, they're barking. No um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah so it's, it's just, yeah, it's been, it's been a really good um, good few years. And like the last year, it's just, you know, Disney Plus just continues to grow. Yeah. And, and, and on that, I mean, when we spoke last time, um, Disney Plus had really just a phenomenal first year of subscri subscriber numbers. Um, and it, it was, I, I, I don't know how much, um, or if it, people could even calculate how much to contribute that growth to the pandemic, but Disney plus launches November 12th, 2019. And in March, 2020, at least here, midway March, 2020 here in the United States is when things kind of mm -hmm. shut down. Um, and then around the world, it, it, a few places had shut down a little earlier than that, a little later. Um, and so over the course of what was sort of the first phase of the pandemic, and, and the reason I say first phase is um, really still before <laughs> vaccines came out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're still there. Like, yeah, but the first phase is before, you know, yeah. vaccines were readily available in, in, in many countries. They're still not available in yeah. many, but um, you that's when you saw such large growth here in the United States, but you also saw that the, the platform launching in different portions of the world and, and in other areas. And so each time you would see that, you would see this huge yeah. um, tick up of the numbers and everything. So um, what is the, as, as latest, what is the estimated subscriber number for Disney Plus? Right. So as of right now, um, as of the last financial quarter um, at the beginning of November, there were just around about 180 million um, subscribers worldwide. And it's important to note that that also includes um, Disney Plus Hotstar in India, which is a slightly different version, but it's a lot cheaper, so they make it a lot less per person. It also includes Star Plus down in Latin America and includes Disney Plus around the world. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of everything kind of thrown into one. 
They're estimating by 2024, they'll hit around about between 230 and 260 million subscribers worldwide. In 2022, they've still got a lot of more countries left to launch in, a lot of places right through Europe. You've got um, um, a lot of like South Africa, the Middle East, and they've still got some other countries like the Philippines and Vietnam still to launch in. Um, so they've, they've still got a lot of places left to launch that will continue to boost it. Um, also, I mean, literally from the next financial results, we'll have um, South Korea, Hong Kong and Taiwan would have um, been included. So there'll be a bit of a boost there. Yeah. They're also doing some higgledy jiggledy with um, the live TV bundle in, in America with Hulu. Um, so that will help boost numbers a bit. So, but that will continue to grow. And by the end of next year, the production is supposed to be in place where everything is in full swing because we're still catching up on what happened with the, uh, the pandemic. You know, we yeah. still had that whole problem of the delays of what they had with the filming are still being felt now. You know, yeah. it wasn't just like, oh, they stopped filming last year. Well, it takes it takes six, eight months to kind of sort all of that out. And you mentioned two things that I want to touch on. Um, when when they, Disney um, Hotstar, um, when that launched um, in India, correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah when was, that launched was, in yeah. India, um, I remember I, I remember listening to um, a, a, a source that was saying, you know, you saw a huge increase. Yeah. But as you mentioned, you also saw kind of price per customer or amount per customer mm. dip down pretty low. Yeah, because it's about $4, of, yeah. And before that, I, I think it was it was almost six. Right. It was somewhere yeah. close to six dollars per user or per subscriber, I should say. Um, and that's important because um, when we talk about subscriber, you know, there, there's typically one subscriber in the household mm. that's paying, and they're, but they're, they could have up to seven different accounts and things like that. Um, but, and the other thing you, you alluded to is what they're doing here in the United States. Uh, mm. and, and I think it's important to point out to everybody, um, I, I'm, from the, I'm speaking from the United States, Roger is speaking um, from the from Great Britain, and the um, so a few things that we talk about, we're gonna have Roger's gonna have a little different perspective of it, especially when we talk about Star um, yeah. and kind of what what Star is internationally um, compared to what Hulu is here in the mm -hmm. United States. And one interesting thing I've I have heard over the last year about Hulu, and I've, I've listened to a few things about it, is in the United States. When Disney purchased Fox, um, they essentially, because of that purchase, Comcast gave the rights or the um, the con the con content control to Disney. However, there's still a contract in place that I believe by 2024, yeah, Disney so basically, can yeah, sell gonna, or or yeah. Comcast has to make them sell. Can you tell yeah, us so, a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, because basically what it was is um, before Disney purchased Fox, it had a 33%. Um, actually, it wasn't even 33 I think it was actually, it was 30% Disney, 30% uh, Fox, 30% Comcast, like Universal, and 10% AT&T mm -hmm. Warner. And they were all doing this because it was kind of like a counter argument to Netflix. Mm -hmm. None of them really wanted to get into like streaming. They still liked the way they were doing it, but they kind of felt like they had to do something. So obviously when Disney bought Fox, it got 60%. So that was then they became the, the primary thing. AT&T then agreed to sell their 10% back. So that made it up to 33% each. Um, there was then, obviously the trouble is at that point, there was this huge thing. You're like, well, who's going to run it? Who's what's going on? Um, so they made an agreement that Disney would have operating control of it. Um, and that they would agree that by 2024, um, either Comcast or Disney can force Disney to purchase the company. There was an independent valuation on it for, I think, it, just under, like, I think it was 27 billion or something like that is what Hulu's worth. And they're going to have to have it financially independently verified to how much it's worth. Mm -hmm. And that would be what it's worth. So either a company can do it, but also from uh, 2022, Comcast can start pulling its content off of hulu if it wants to so that's a big that could be a massive problem for hulu and i think there's also a deal where they can kind of negotiate it early 
Um, mm. So there's been a little of argy bargy over the last few weeks of like um, Comcast sort of saying, look, we're quite happy to hold on to it. Yeah. yeah. Which obviously is like along the lines of, yeah, give us more money. Um, but also, Disney have been essentially, they don't, there's no point in them making Hulu worth more. Because if they make Hulu worth twice as much, they've got to give a third of that yeah. to Comcast for doing nothing. Um, so that's why they cancelled the whole international expansion of Hulu. That all went straight up the pan. And essentially why you don't see a lot of originals because they don't really, there's no benefit for yeah. the Disney to build it up. So that's why they ended up adding in Star as a sixth brand into Disney+. Plus. So you've got like, um, you've got Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, and then you've got Star, which contains all the ABC shows, the 20th Century, all the Searchlight movies. And it's important that it is just built into Disney+. Plus. There's, it's, there's no difference when you're going through the screen. Of, you'll see Aliens, Die Hard, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what was it? Duck McStuffins and then DuckTales. You know, there's no, it's all mixed up if you're on the adult profile. And it's been a massive success. Um, tripled the size of the, um, the, the library. Churn rate is down. There's a lot less people unsubscribing yeah. to Disney+, Plus because there's more stuff. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys have, like, Sub- unsubscribe from Disney Plus when Loki finished because you weren't coming back to Hawkeye, or maybe you unsubscribe when The Mandalorian ended and you're not coming back till The Book of Boba Fett. Well, with Star, you know, you've got American Horror Stories, one, um, Only Murders in the Building, you've got Dope Sick, you've got Predator, the Aliens, Die, you know, got all this stuff in there. So, therefore, you, you're much more likely to keep around. There's new, new stuff dropping all the time. And we've got one, one platform. And it's become, Disney now got the data to show that this is really helping. The engagement is up and it's just a lot easier. In Latin America, they kind of wanted a different option. They kind of launched Star Plus, just to confuse things every month more, which was like sports and Star combined. And it's apparently not doing very well because it's quite expensive for what it is. And so, yeah, it's been a bit of a mess. And there's a lot of pressure right now on, on Wall Street, by Wall Street and um about sorting out what's going on in America because this triple streaming bundle in the United States is not ideal. Bob Chapek has said that himself. Um, there's a lot of pressure on changing Disney Plus to incorporate Hulu. There's also a little, there is also a big, a, the big um, debate from another portion um, where they don't want it. They want to keep Disney Plus as yeah. I would essentially say the babysitting service of keeping everything really family friendly and. My argument always that is like, what is a what's family friendly? Yeah. And that's where the problem comes in with Disney Plus. And and that's really interesting that <clears throat> you mentioned that. Um, because the last time we spoke, you said Disney has sort of a, a perception in the United States of there's a lot of nostalgia with yeah. Disney in the United States, where that doesn't necessarily exist internationally, which is why internationally they could incorporate star and and it's yeah. not they can incorporate a movie like you know if you if yeah. you're watching during christmas you could watch uh um, die hard comes santa claus on tomorrow and then, <laughs> and, and then watch yeah and then watch die hard you know um i you have to add hawkeye to that now yeah. as well um and it, it it's it's really interesting in the united states that there it's it's almost like this holding pattern with like you said what do we do with hulu What's going to happen with Hulu that you you don't you don't want to completely let it tank because if you do you're not making money off of it you still yeah. have to pay Comcast what the original agreement was if you expand it like you said you have to pay thirty three percent of however much you know you're going to make over that and so it, it it'll be really interesting here in the United States once that sell happens and yeah I I I. I have heard rumblings of, you know, Comcast saying, no, let's, let's hold on to this because it's working out for us, which also does make me think, you know, that, that part of the Fox deal, I remember when that happened, I remember thinking, is this Disney's way? Are they going to use the platform and essentially turn it into Disney plus? Is that like, is that going to be the means that they're going to actually be able to launch this Disney plus? That's not what happened. And now, like, uh, I, I've heard various people talk about um, looking back and vision being 2020, looking back, um, I wonder if they would have done that deal differently um, with Hulu in the United States. I think at the time, they were very much in a situation of they just spent a lot of money out of it. They didn't want to spend another $27 billion buying out um, thing. And then, obviously, we had the pandemic. 
and I can't, and I, you know, let's, like, Disney were not in a situation in the last year, really, where they could then, um, my dog's fighting here, but in my feet. So, yeah, they wouldn't be able to um, buy a Mac. You know, we were right in the middle of the pandemic. They, they, all the parks are closed. The, the cinemas are shut. It made no sense for them to do it. They're probably now going into, like, 2022 in a different position. You know, streaming has changed. But also, when the, Disney brought Fox, Peacock, HBO Max, mm -hmm. Paramount Plus, they didn't exist, you know, yeah. and you know, the whole world of streaming has changed so much yes. in the last few years, and they can see where it's going, the data is all changing, you know, the way cinemas are changing, with... so we're in a different position, really, and I think, you know, and also Disney have probably now, they, you know, they've sorted out the Fox side, there's a lot of assets that they're selling, a lot of stuff they're sorting out, so they probably clawed back billions in selling stuff off, you know, been selling off production companies in like mm -hmm. Latin America, one that's come up recently, um, selling off channels and stuff. So they've been doing a lot of saving. So they're probably in a better position now where they could do something. But I think all the time the parks were closed, they couldn't do anything. They, was, they were kind of limited by what they were. And I think that is definitely something that they've got to, that I, I personally feel that they've got to deal with this sooner rather than later. Yeah. They can't keep Hulu dragging on because it's dragging down Disney Plus at the same time. I mean, there's this constant um, just drip feed of we need more content. We need more yeah. content. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I find it very, that whole idea of like, what is Disney Plus? I mean, apparently not even Disney know in their, in their own office of why is the Beatles get back appropriate and why is Hawkeye appropriate? But a show like, you know, Blackish or mm -hmm. um, Wonder Years or something like that. Why is that? Not, you know, you've got a TV show about a kid going to school. But Hawkeye can blow people up, you know, and that, that's perfectly fine. And it's just that thing of like, well, where, where does this come in? And I feel like Disney are in that situation now. They know, know that having multiple platforms. Yeah. And I mean, every single time it gets brought up, someone will pop in and go, well, that's what Hulu's for. Yeah. Like, yeah, but what we've got Hulu now, it's going to be drastically different in two years when nearly all of the other platforms have taken all their content off because they're putting it on their own. Because you're going to have the same problem Netflix have had, where Hulu, like everyone, was going to, have, yeah, but you take that away and you take this away and you take that away and you take Hulu's left with not a lot. Yeah, which is a, a, one one thing that, um, and I had a question I was about to ask. You mentioned something, so so we're going down that we're going down that path real quick. <laughs> um, the 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 new Sony agreement. Yeah. Um, where Sony, I, I can't remember if it's all of Sony's library or a lot of Sony's library is going to be able to be on Disney streaming services. Now, internationally, that's all one, yeah. that's all one service. You don't leave the app here in the United States. You might have to leave the app. And that that's, what's important for people listening to, to understand is if you're, I mean, you know, it's what it's the same thing to me when Michael Eisner first took over as CEO and you saw this great expansion in the parks and especially Walt Disney World, because they saw the data that if people are going on a four day vacation, they're usually spending two days or two and a half days at Disney and then they're going to the beach or they're going somewhere else. And so they had this massive expansion of resorts and offerings they open animal kingdom they well they first opened um mgm studios hollywood studios then animal kingdom all in an effort to keep people on property and now you literally can go and you could spend if you want you could spend a week or more and really not leave disney property easily it's the same thing with with disney plus you don't if somebody is leaving your um app then maybe they're they're thinking about leaving to go to hulu and watch something on hulu but who knows maybe while flipping through their menu for their apps they see netflix and they're reminded hey there's this new yeah. show on netflix so i'm going to click on that and all of a sudden now you have lost that person for however long they're going to be watching that content well, on that's, netflix yeah i was gonna say that's actually how um, the Netflix CEO looks at all content. So he views like, if you go off and watch YouTube, if you go off and watch play Fortnite, mm -hmm. all of this stuff is competition to hit the yeah. eyeballs. Yeah. You know, I, it's the amount of time that you've got your eyeballs in. And, you know, I mean, how, with Disney plus, I mean, how often do you go into the app? How often do you go, you know, I mean, how often do you go in? I, so, so I'm someone that I have gone in. I literally have gone in every day. 
and watch something since it launched. I am, I am, I think, very different in that respect. Yeah. That I think most people, you're probably going in, uh, I don't, once Hopefully. or twice a week. Um, you know, if if you are interested in watching Hawkeye, which the first three episodes yeah. to me are, are have been fantastic. Um, the, you know, you might go in on Wednesdays, or you might still have that Friday. I know a lot right. of people had for kind of Friday family times that they were watching. Mm -hmm. So you might be going in one week uh, or one day a week. Um, so it, it is, it is interesting mm -hmm. how to keep people in your platforms with this just great expansion of what streaming is now and how it's just kind of taking over mm -hmm. everything in entertainment. Um, something, something else that when you mentioned what Disney is in the United States and um, that, you know, it's that kind of nostalgia, the wholesomeness and, and what's appropriate on Disney and what's not. Um, you had shared something actually a couple days ago um, that surveys, a survey found people want more mature content or yeah. more um, adult content on Disney Plus, similar to what you would have on yeah. Netflix or Peacock or something else. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's really interesting. And we've talked about the issues that Disney could have in the future yeah. with this. Well, I think the thing is, I think you're generally looking at like, if you're an adult, and I know my, my, my buddies and stuff of like, they would watch like the Mandalorian and the Marvel series. And like, in reality, what else were they gonna watch? I mean, yeah, they, you know, they had the Marvel movies and great. But you do get to a certain point where it's like, what else do you watch? And um, I think there is that feeling of like, you know, where's all the big binge? Where's all the, like the bingey shows? Where's all, you know, Malcolm in the Middle, you know, the Goldbergs, those kind of shows, which essentially are about kids. Most of them mm -hmm. are about kids anyway. Um, and I feel like, you know, there's, there's been this kind of thing of like, um, well, why is there nothing like this? There's no binge work in and The Simpsons is really popular. And The Simpsons is one of those weird things of like, over here in the UK, The Simpsons is a Saturday morning cartoon. Mm -hmm. It literally is on a Saturday morning. It's on every day after school. Um, I remember having action figures and backpacks and stuff when it came out the first time around. And it's a kid show. But in America, they go, like, oh no, it's a bit, it's a bit edgy. Yeah. Disney Plus. I'm like, I'm like, what's a kid show here? It's like it, it was like it, it's like it never never airs after seven o'clock at night. It's like, and you know, there is that little difference. And I also feel like in the US, there's a massive difference. And I've spent a lot of time out in America. You know, you have that coastal divide, you know, you have mm -hmm. the East Coast and West Coast, and then you have like the middle, there is a big difference in the audience. And I feel like, you know, there's has been this thing of like, what are you going to watch on Disney Plus? What's going to pull you in as a, not necessarily as an adult, but it doesn't, and I think it's, it often gets thrown around and like mature. Mm -hmm. And instantly people then go to like, you know, you know, violence and sex mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, it doesn't have to, it's just like, you know, it'd be nice if something's aged for above a 12 year old. <laughs> and yeah. there's like you know there's a lot of stuff it doesn't have to, you know disney plus has a tv 14 right. limit and i don't think it really uses it i don't yeah. think it really utilizes that um very much at all i don't think it there's a lot of shows because they've been trying to feed hulu and this is the that's mm -hmm. again oh they can't do that because that's on hulu well we, uh, we can't do that cause, and it's like yeah because you you have kind of stifling what they can do and they can keep making stuff and all the rest of it and i mean i personally you know, I look what, you know, you watch some of like the Disney Plus originals and it's like, you watch like Doogie Kamaloa MD and you're like, this is a 16 year old. And it's like, but she's not acting like a 16 year old. Yeah. She's not, and it's like, who are they actually aiming this at? Um, and I feel like that they, this is where they, they fell into this thing right at the beginning of making it under this Disney brand. And yeah, I'm not being funny, but internationally, that's not going to fly. You know, yeah. the, a lot of those shows are not big enough. There's a reason why those shows, you don't really hear much about them. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why the Marvel and the Star Wars shows dominate because they are mainstream, you know, every, you know, my dad sits there and watches those shows. He's not going to sit there and watch Doogie Kamalo Aloha, you know, yeah. and it's like, and that's, you know, and I know they have a target audience and there's, you know, this, you make shows for different things, but there's a lot of people now going, well, if I'm, I'd like to watch more on here, why is that okay? But that isn't. And I think, you know, there's also a lot of people waking up, you know, especially like with social media and like seeing what's happening elsewhere and going, well, why are they getting that? And we're yeah. not. Yeah. And I think that, I think the trouble is, well, the internet's it's made the world smaller. 
Yeah. And they're like, you're sitting there with your Disney Plus subscription. And if I then showed you my screen and showed you what's all on there, you'd probably be like, well, I'd kind of like that. Too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, well, why can't I have that? Yeah. And, it, you know, it is it, when we talked last time, the way, and we talked about Star, the way I make sense of it is internationally, Star, the Star brand is Hulu times one and a half, maybe. It, there's a lot more content than there is on Hulu. Um, but that that's the way that I make sense of it from yeah. like trying to to think about it. Um, and so- Well, I just want to pop in just for like with the star yeah, brand. Disney had got to the point where like a few months ago, they even actually stopped using the star brand over here already. They've already kind really? of stopped. They've already started, they'll put up a post to like the, the advertising for like Dope Sick, which is like original series streaming mm -hmm. on Disney Plus, American Horror Story, uh, double feature original series start coming to disney plus they kind of started pulling away from the star yeah. plus, star branding because it didn't mean anything and it was confusing because this was a brand new brand for all of us and it's yeah. meaningless it doesn't have any connection to anything it was an, an it was a, a well-established franchise and brand in um asia yeah uh, but it's not um in the europe and so it's this it doesn't mean anything like 20th century studios so, so disney have actually started removing that branding you know they had, they are now just saying you know like this morning you know there's um we got the last jewel uh the new uh you know on the disney plus thing it's just available now on disney plus they're kind of dropping the whole star thing because people thought it was a paid extra or yeah something so they're already starting to change the, the messaging six months on because they've kind of gone past the idea of you know, are they going to be able to take this you know are people going to get upset with us like yeah now they realize it doesn't really matter it doesn't yeah so then on on star you said if you're on the the like if you're logged in as an adult if you're on an adult account and we need to say that um like kids can't watch things on star unless they have that you can't watch it unless you have access right like you kind of unlock yeah. the content on star but now like if if you pulled up your app i pulled up my app yeah um what i see is a mixture of all five brands on there yeah I now see you six, see yeah. all six brands so yeah i was gonna, you I was just see. gonna yeah i was just gonna like try sharing but i couldn't it wasn't gonna allow me to do it but yeah literally like now if i've, I've just brought up my disney plus um my app and literally we have got like new on disney plus we have got um the big leap dope sick beetles get back shang chi and drain the oceans and then it says under there um like the last jewel devs and then underneath that we've got things like visions and avengers and it's all integrated all into one app so you can really see uh kind of like what essentially what the difference would be moving forward with all that and it is it is just very it's just all built in there you wouldn't even know you wouldn't even know any difference yeah um and i actually when you said that i actually just tried to figure out how to let you share <laughs> and i <laughs> Yeah, my apologies. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm, out. I'm so used to doing it myself. I'm just like, I'm like I bought the other side. I go, oh no, I can't do it. <laughs> um, the um, so a few things that that I I wanted to check in from from last time. Um, one is the last time we spoke, you talked about how you you watch all originals that come out. Are you still able to do that? I do that on all the Disney, the Disney Plus ones. Have actually kind of in some way they've slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we're getting them, but there's a lot less of them, and they're not releasing them all like weekly um, yeah. as much. Um, it's been a bit of a wild one. Like, kind of, they are doing stuff. I mean, I did. Um, I mean, I watched the, um like yesterday. I pretty much just watched the whole of Welcome to Earth. Um, okay. Um, so that's coming out next week um, as a time of recording. And so I do, I'll be honest with the Star Originals, I've now got to the point where I don't watch all of them because yeah. if I don't like the series, it's not much point. Um, yeah. And also the release schedules can be a bit funny because sometimes they can be months behind. And at which point you're like, for the sake of like a review purpose, it's like, well, it's already three months old. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. So I don't bother. Um, and if I don't like the series, it's like, I'll watch the first few ones and go, oh, yeah, 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 I'm um, I'm just trying to think, like, some of the ones, like, you know, they've been releasing um, different series. Uh, um, just trying to see here. Like, I've been enjoying, like, Dope Sick. Um, trying to think of some of the, yeah, they're like American Horror Stories. I kind of yeah. watched a few episodes and haven't really kind of gone back. Bless the Hearts, I've not really kind of gone back for that one. 
the premise. I think I've only watched half of that. And so I try to, I do try to watch at least a few episodes of everything. Mm-hmm. Certain ones catch on. Some of them are like, you know, oh, when I get chance, I'll watch that or when I get chance and stuff. But yeah, you, know, you do get, um, I did try to watch all of them. Um, but generally the main, the main ones, if it's sometimes, I mean, they'll give us like a, a, a show that's been out for a year and you're like, well, there's not really much yeah. behind the point. <laughs> yeah. The, um, and, and I asked, because I remember thinking, man, that is, that is, that would be very difficult. Um, because when it first came out, I did try to watch everything. Um, and I, I still watch a lot, but there's, there's a lot of stuff that I haven't seen. Like I, I did, I did watch, um, Doogie Camelo High, and I, I watched um, uh, Turner and Hooch and things, which oh, they were I actually, hard. <laughs> it was it was getting it was getting difficult to be able to 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 watch a lot of those things. And actually, I I enjoyed both series. I, again, it's that maybe it's that perspective. I know, yes, Doogie Camelo High was not you know she's she's not acting like a sixteen year old necessarily. Um, the I, I kind of, I guess, appreciated or saw like the message that's because that's kind of how the Disney Channel is. You know, you you sort of have your you have your the issues that you have to deal with as a family, but you they deal with it in a very kind of PG way, things like that. Um, Tur- Turner and Hooch was was much the same way. I what's interesting about that's Turner awful. and Hooch is is I thought it was they were trying to because obviously i mean it's about a u.s marshal there there yeah. is you know there's there's gun battle and everything in that and there's they were trying to see if they could be a little more like maybe what people say is edgy or gritty mm-hmm. or something like that and it, it it hasn't been renewed for the second season um which seems like it i guess it hasn't been it wasn't successful or as successful as it could have been um but yeah i i think it's interesting that um how how you're you're able to stay on top of things and you're able to to yeah. keep up with the schedule and do the the reviews and everything because i, I yeah, read most yeah. of the reviews that that you put out and they're they're very yeah, very high like, quality yeah i was gonna say so some of the ones especially on some of the other sh- series like turner and hooch and doogie where i did like the first because i got certain like you know early copies so i watched them a little bit in advance um after the third one i'm not watching any more yeah. of this or more along the lines of i'll watch it for the like to do our podcast but i'm not writing a review because yeah. i don't like it and um, so somebody else was like can i just like you carry on and then kind of got yeah. to that same support but yeah so i do i do try i make it my priority to watch all the originals what i do i view that as like what i have to do and yeah. that's just what, what so i do do that um it's it's got easier sometimes it's easier than others um some shows are a lot more fun to watch than others um yeah. sometimes it can be a little bit of a, a bit of a, um you know if you don't enjoy it and it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter it's like you know if you if you give out books or you lot to read you know you're not going to enjoy everything yeah and yeah. you know that's definitely i think something that you've got to you just take it in and ultimately you've got to be honest with a who the target audience is but also do you like it? You know, do you yeah. like it? And you've got to be honest with that. Yeah. And so uh, on that note, um, what uh, over 2021, what are some of the things that have come out that that you have really latched on to? Uh, what are some of the originals yeah. that have come out to movies and series yeah. that you've you've latched on to? I think definitely, I mean, it's easy to say like one division, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, Hawkeye just a given they are amazing series i think loki was fantastic um i kind of i i really kind of got into the uh the mysterious benedict society i Mm -hmm. enjoy that one i thought that was a a really cool little series something a bit different felt a bit quirky a little bit odd didn't fit the normal thing big shot surprised me yes shot was a surprise um i wasn't too sure going into that if i was going to like it and grab it kind of like they were like on that borderline you know they were dealing with problems that teenagers have mm-hmm. but treating them a little bit more like they were actually you know a teenager mm-hmm. and i like that about that series um so yeah that, those are the kind of the main ones that stand out i'm um, some in some great movies uh like luca was i i really enjoyed luca that was fantastic i also um some of the documentaries that um, national geographic 
we've brought out have been pretty cool. Um, there's one that's literally coming out tomorrow as a recording, the, the Rescue, amazing documentary about the cave diving. Yeah. So I re- really enjoyed that whole aspect. Um, so those kind of stand out from the Disney side of point of view. I'm trying to think of what else there was. There's been a few ones here and there, like um, there's not really been a lot of movies this year. It's been really light on the movie side of things. Um, but then on the like the star originals, I've been enjoying like Dope Sick, Only Murders in the Building, Love Victor Season 2. Um, those are the kind of, and I Love Vacation Friends. That was actually quite a fun little movie as well. Um, yeah, so those have kind of been the main ones um, that I've enjoyed. Yeah. It, I, with, um, well, you, you said, you said light on movies. It feels like a lot of the movies, I shouldn't say a lot, a few of the movies that have come out or the, the big movies have been a direct, uh, kind of effect or, or, or from the pandemic because, yeah, definitely, you know, you had Jungle Cruise. Um, which which I really really liked Jungle Cruise. Yeah, see, I, it, it came no, no, out I didn't, like I didn't I kind of didn't ca- include them in the originals because yeah. that was the, yeah that was so I would have said that one because that one's an awesome movie. But and and it it, it does you mention um, Luca and I actually had Luca written down. Yeah. Um, Luca is very interesting because you had you had Soul December or Christmas Day 2020. You yeah. had Luca come out summer 2021. Shortly after, there were stories circulating around about how you know, people that work at Pixar, um, you know, it was, mm. it was difficult for them to necess- not necessarily be able to see their movies out in a movie theater, because traditionally, that's how you measure the success of something. Yeah, I think if Soul had been in the theaters, I think if Luca had been in the theaters, they would have been very successful because Pixar is a very trusted brand. Same thing going back to Onward, if Onward would have had the traditional theatrical run yeah that at least you had a week <laughs> yeah i mean you that that literally was the last movie we saw in the theater before everything shut down um we saw it and then like three weeks later it had been released on disney plus because it couldn't be shown in theaters and um so with something like pixar which is so interesting to me because um if you if you read or listen to bob Iger's book when he first became CEO, the Pixar label was more trusted than the Disney animation label. Yeah. And, and it was making the company so much money that it's interesting during the pandemic, they chose those two movies to put out and, and completely bypass theatrical yeah. release. Now they, they did that with uh, what was it, Artemis Fowl and a couple other movies that that may have performed moderately at the yeah. box office, um, which is understandable. You, you you put those on your streaming service, and I think more companies mm-hmm. and more studios are going to start going that way anyway. Um, but what's your take on on Pixar and releasing those two Pixar movies straight to Disney Plus rather than have the traditional theatrical run? I feel like first of all, I think with the Pixar one, I think they were much more in the line of we were in the middle of the in the middle of the pandemic. They were like, right, we're actually still making all of our future movies. They're all still going on right now. You know, they're yeah. all still being made in everyone's bedrooms and offices. And so I don't think the pressure was on them the same way of like with a live action where they couldn't get together. Mm-hmm. So therefore they could be like, right, we can actually put this out because you know, turning red and buzz lightyear and all the rest of it are still gonna come. You know, there's not there might be a little bit of a delay, but you know, they weren't going to have that issue where they were holding on stuff. I, mm-hmm. and I feel like they just went, right, you know what, let's do, we're going to do some tests. We're going to experiment. We are going to do, we can do stuff now, which we could never do before. And they took a punt. I mean, Soul was a huge, huge hit on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. It was the most, it was a massive number in Nielsen wise, amount of people watching it, massive success. Luke has been pretty much the same. It's actually proven. And while yeah, they didn't maybe bring as much money in um, at the box office. What are they bringing in merchandise sales? What did that? How did that impact? Of you know, our Luca. I don't. Soul's a bit tricky because there's not really a lot of like merchandise. It wasn't really a merchandisey yeah. kind of movie. You know, they, you got Oscar nominations and bits and pieces. I just feel like they took a. I think they took some risks because the cinemas were closed and like, well, like, well, we got these movies. We need something to put on there. Um, I do feel like we're turning red. I mean, they've been very 
like the advertising does not say cinema, mm-hmm. but they're still keeping things pretty close. I think they're going to see how Encanto does right now. Um, I mean, even that they've speeded up to arrive on Disney Plus on Christmas Eve mm-hmm. uh, to speed it up, even though they're trying not to mention it um, because they, they don't want to damage the box office. Yeah. They, yeah. The box, they're trying to get the box office back. They, you know, that was a big income. And it's kind of funny. I feel like with Pixar, it's hard to kind of judge what's going on because those movies, yeah, they can't be viewed in the same way without a, a, a theatrical. Because yeah. we all put this pressure on this box office. Well, if it made this much money, it's good. Well, it didn't take any money at the box office, but it's still a great movie. Yeah, you know, we kind of put that on it itself, and I feel like, you know, we've we've done that, and I think you know we're going to have problems before. I mean, there was a literally articles out this week of a big chunk of the audience are not going back to cinemas. Yeah. And there's a big chunk of audience that might not even ever go back to cinemas because yeah. they're like, no. And I do feel like now we're at a point now that now the, the, the sort of the supply chain of movies is free flowing. And I'm going to use like what we're getting over here, like in the UK for an example now of, you know, we got, you know, what do we get? We got like, um, so we got Ryan and the Last Dragon in the summer. Then we got um, Black Widow, Jungle Cruise. So then we had, Shang-Chi and then we had Free Guy and then we've just had the, the last jewel we've had some National Geographic stuff dropping in as well we've had the Night House and now we're getting you know we're going to be getting Ron's Gone Wrong coming up and then we're going to get these you know we're going to get French Dispatch and we'll get this one and that so we're starting to get movies like every two to three mm-hmm. weeks that are only six eight weeks at the cinema so the originals are kind of dropping off but we're starting to get these massive drops like nearly a couple of movies a month that were a big movie so it was this kind of supply chain of kind of getting everything going. And now that the theatrical window is so much shorter because yeah. essentially most movies don't really make a lot of money after like the third or fourth weekend. Yeah. It's all, have, I mean, all those Spider-Man tickets, we've all rushed out to buy and brought down the servers. Probably the week two, it's going to die bomb because so many of us went on the first few days. It's artificially kind of, yeah. high, you know, high and low. Well, and uh, that's, uh, everything you you start talking and two or three more questions come up uh, the, <laughs> the most recent thing you said it's so interesting that you said like the the decrease from weekend from weekend one to weekend two and when we try to talk about how you measure success moving forward not just in the pandemic but mm-hmm. moving forward mm-hmm. i remember when i listened to bob Iger's book the chapter about launching disney plus and this came out in 2018, yeah. I think. So the Disney yeah. Plus hadn't launched. But that chapter, he said, you, we have to redefine. People have yeah. to redefine success and redefine how even um, like revenue sharing and things like mm-hmm. that, because it's not, it's not going to be the same revenue share. So what, what is success right now? Right now, it seems like success and streaming is subscribers and that's what that's what six how success is measured well i'd say how it goes do you in two measure ways. with a movie yeah. well i would say it kind of goes in two ways right now because you've got the subscriber numbers and then you got like viewing you notice like netflix have recently launched this new website which is tracking and giving you updates on the hourly or the how many minutes are watched and then the content is kind of being viewed on how many views it's getting how many people are watching mm-hmm. and then you've got the, the service is on the subscriber. So a movie is very much like, did it get enough views? You know, Red Notice on Netflix has had, I think like half the people on Netflix have watched it. So they consider that to be the most successful movie of all time on Netflix because it's been watched by more people. And that's a, Squid Game is another perfect example mm-hmm. of a, a, a massive success because they view it on how many people have watched it. That is their definition of success. And on television, we've kind of been looking like that. You know, we always used to go by the television ratings. How many millions did it get to watch? And now it's just flicking over. But streaming services have been kind of holding on to their data a bit. So they don't tend to, yeah. um, things are starting to loosen up a little bit. But that's what they're going. They're going off of time. That's the new the new um, measurement, really. And that's the same thing for the movies of how many, how many people are watching it. How does... And what you've seen, how does that translate over? How are studios um, translating that into revenue being brought in? Because it, when it was box office, it was easy. You could see, and because we had third, we still have third-party mm-hmm. um, companies reporting box office numbers. You could see how much was brought in. 
it's very, very difficult to know how much like ROI came from Luca or came yeah. from Soul because they they weren't premium content or you know they they weren't premium yeah. access. So how do they trans? Have you learned how they or seen how they translate that to that well, I ROI? Think it's it's primarily it's about trying to keep the churn down. To okay. trying to stop people from unsubscribing you keep giving them content to keep getting your subscription because you can look at this way so you're paying for disney plus and you're paying i don't say 80 dollars a month or 80 dollars a year sorry now so they want to keep that subscription rolling so you're paying them 80 dollars so that's what they want to keep going and but if they know that next month they've got this much coming in and then the next month they got more coming in and then the month they they don't know that with the movies you know the, yeah. the king's man could flop and make no money you know, um, they don't know that with every, every industry has got, you know, there's obviously a little bit of that, but things can get affected. Um, now they know that they've got this, this guaranteed money coming in and that's what shareholders and stuff like yeah. constant money coming in. You know, they're not reliant with, you know, is a movie going to be a hit or a, a flop? Well, it, if it goes on the streaming service and it keeps people engaged, I mean, they, the stats and they know they do so much stat work yeah. looking at how, you know, how, you know this is why they keep going on about new stuff new originals and i know there's a lot of people that get really excited you know like oh why is why is this old show from the 70s not on there well in all honesty it's not going to move the needle yeah. i know you you in you know some people if you know a, a tv show from the 80s isn't going to shift it but a brand new movie or a brand new series is what's going to grab someone's attention and so i i your response is perfect is a perfect way to explain it that it it may be more muted but it's more consistent. So you have yeah. that consistency. And what I mean by muted is you don't have that huge like in game made, you know, how over $2 billion yeah. there is. And then, you know, they Disney re releases the last jewel. <laughs> Disney re releases um, uh, Avatar, Avatar to, yeah. to boost it. And then they re release in game. But so you don't have those huge numbers that just kind of stand out as a one time but you make a great point those are one time events and those events might you know some of them are absolutely huge we don't want to discount that that's actually how Walt Disney Studios built their their current headquarters off of what they yeah. made from you know Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs but it is more consistent well you now. have to look at it this way it's like if they if say they hit their target of, let's say 200 million just for to make like math a bit easier 200 million subscribers a month and they're making five dollars per subscriber that's a billion yeah a month that's 12 but you know that's a billion a month every month and they don't have you know that's a constant just i don't know if they can keep growing it but they've got to feed it they've got to you know yeah. it's like anything you've got to keep putting new things on there but everything you're putting on there is still still gaining views it's still you know you're still an investment you know they put a movie on there well it stays there and it continues to keep bringing people in and yeah. giving those numbers up but yeah it's that constant you know if they say they hit 300 million you know that's a lot of money yeah. coming in and if they can get the um you know if they boost up the price a bit more 10 you know if they start making 10 dollars you know that's all you know they could really you know you start looking at that maybe two billion dollars a month yeah you know that's a, that's a, a lot coming in every single month well and and on that note i mean they have and i think some of this comes from as you talked about things are starting to speed up a little bit more things are still being impacted by the pandemic shutdowns but they're starting to speed up a little bit more in production it can can resume a little bit easier um this year you know they 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 announced essentially there's they're investing eight billion dollars more than they did last year on content for i think a total correct me if i'm wrong a total of 33 billion is it yeah, 32 uh, or 33 it's about it's about that there but uh 10 million that is on sports so just gonna yeah take that because yeah. take that out yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> it's but that's not real entertainment because uh, <laughs> the trouble is with sport is it's all it's a very niche market because mm -hmm. again you know, it's like yeah, it's feeding um, ESPN and um, you know, it's like Star Plus, but it's not feeding the rest of the network. And yeah. you know, if you buy the soccer or say like the cricket or something like that, once that's gone, it's gone. There's not yeah. a huge value in. I mean, it's just it does pull people in, and it's been a massive part of their company. But sport is a very tricky line of you know what to do with it. They are heavily investing in sport, but. Yeah, it's just, I just wanted to put in a, like about 10 million, 10 million of that is sports yeah. rights, which well, they don't and, even own. 
and and since since you since you mentioned that one of the one interesting thing that that i i talk about in in my other when, when i'm not talking about disney i i am a a marketing professor for the, the sport commerce department so we talk about things like that that and when you look specifically at disney one of the big reasons for disney purchasing um what was abc it was capital cities mm -hmm. but what was abc was espn at the time back in the 80s and now you hear all the talk of how much is espn making how much is it costing the company would the company ever actually try to sell off espn and it is interesting because the sport sport fandom is a niche market you know more more than half of a population are not sport fans it, it's somewhere around 40 45 percent or what we, you refer to as sport fans and then within that it's much smaller for different sports and yeah. events and everything but do you think live sport entertainment how is that going to impact streaming in the future are we going to see es here in the united states espn on Disney Plus. Internationally, you're going to see, they are, are Netflix going to start making deals where they're going to have live entertainment? Because all these streaming services, you know, most of it's built on rewatchability and, and, and you don't have to be there live to watch yeah. it. Do you think that's going to be incorporated well, sometime in the future? Live sports is still one of the most watched things. Yeah. And that's that's what they, you know, they've got the stat, you know, they, they do say this, a lot of people watch a live sport. Um, in India and Malaysia, they have live sports for Disney Plus, um, for Disney Plus Hotstar. Um, in Latin America, they put it into Star Plus with the live sport. You're seeing all the deals they're doing with um, all the new sports things. You read through the press releases, it's very kind of like, we're not really committing to where we're putting this. We can yeah. put this where we want. And also, like, we are putting this onto Hulu. They're putting more sports onto mm -hmm. Hulu because, I mean, in some way, I could see them, you know, that might be a, a, a merge and much simpler. But I mean, I was recently talking to someone, you know, for example, here on Discovery Plus, you know, now Eurosport is being kind of merged in with um, Discovery Plus, but you have to pay like two, you know, a couple of pounds more to have access to the sports. Mm -hmm. um, so they might incorporate it, but it might be an extra additional fee because that's what ESPN always made everyone money yeah. for was because it was so much more expensive. Um, and ESPN Plus has been quite cheap, and it's, you can see the price slowly creeping up as they're putting more and more sports on, and it's costing more to do. Um, and I also feel like, and I mean, as someone that's had like you know cable TV and satellite, cable, you know, I only used to subscribe to Sky Sports for the WWE. Once the mm -hmm. WWE network existed, I got rid of my Sky Sports and yeah. went to them, and that was a prime example of you know that you could move on. But you can't. I don't know. It's Live sports really boosts up the costs, but if you're not a sports family or you're not a sports watcher, it's costing you a lot. Yeah, and I think that yeah. I think if we are going to see, I could much easier see in the future. You know, I can easily see ESPN Plus being like uh, built in to Disney Plus or something like that because it's all built on the same technology and all the like they've done with Hulu because you can watch ESPN Plus within there. Um, I that I think in some ways that's where they could probably go with incorporating it. Um, yeah, like, I, I definitely feel like it could it could come in at some point. I could definitely see it. You you think it would be uh you think it would be an extra cost? So sort of like the bundle is now in the United States, where if you pay for the bundle or you you want Disney Plus and ESPN Plus or Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, Hulu, all you pay for the bundle, but it's all in the same app. Is that I, what you see? I think happening? They've got, they've got, yeah. I think that's a just tricky one. I could see why they could include it. But it's it's gonna really boost up the price, yeah. And that's gonna yeah. it's gonna drastically. I mean, essentially, I would say that would be almost like double the price of Disney Plus if they yeah. start putting sports in. And they've got they've got that line to do. The only difference is if if Peacock, you know, Paramount Plus and HBO Max and Amazon are all doing live sports, and that's they've got to yeah, counteract that. To. It's this is what the problem is of you know these Disney Plus went on this little niche thing, and then everybody else has gone off over here and done all this stuff, and you're like, yeah. You know, and Netflix hasn't got into it because I think it realizes there's a lot of money and it would require probably a lot of infrastructure changes into doing live streaming and stuff. But um, I, 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 would, I wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be at all surprised if it eventually happened. But I don't know if right now ESPN Plus is probably, they're very much easier to keep separate. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I do think if it's incorporated, I think 
it would be for someone who wants it, they pay something extra so that the people who don't want it don't have to pay. Because I, I do think, as we said, the majority of a population are not sport fans. That could be something that turns somebody off to the well, streaming service if they're having to pay. An adi- I mean, that was that was kind of the case. That was what one of the things that a lot of people didn't like about the cable model is even if you didn't want ESPN, you were paying for ESPN. Even if you've yeah. never also, watched it, you were paying for You've it. also got the, the other issue, and this is a big issue with Disney Plus Hotstar, is when a season ends, the cricket season ends, mm-hmm. a load of people unsubscribe because they don't, yeah. you know, they'll, um, like WWE doesn't really have that. So it's not something I have to worry. But, you know, a lot of sports, you know, if they shut down for free for them, it's like, well, I'm not paying for, for yeah. sports. I'll close down my. So, so that's where you have that problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, there, there's a few things that I, I want to make sure to ask and we're we're running up on on the, your yeah. time but uh real quick your reaction to disney plus day in, in comparison to in comparison to disney investor day last year i think it's interesting that it was called disney investor day last year this was called disney plus day yes and it may have been i, I think some of it is people built up expectations that that we probably shouldn't have built up that it yeah. was going to be investor day and they never yeah. promised it was going to be, but kind of what was your reaction? Well, I, to, to be honest, my problem was, was Investor Day was along the lines of, this was the, in the middle of the pandemic, all well, the theme parks are closed, the cinemas are closed, along the lines of saying to investors, we're, give us some money, we're fine, <laughs> yeah. we're good, we, we're good, yeah. look at all this stuff we've got coming. We've literally scratched logos down on a, lo- on a thing, and this is all of our ideas for the next four years. Thank you very much, you know, just give us money, like four years, like, they were giving us this, that, this, that. Here's another logo. Here's another logo. We're doing this. We're doing that. For the, coming up to 2024, 2025. Great. Amazing. Boosted up stock. Disney Plus Day comes and they're like, yeah, well, that stuff what we had have told you last year. We haven't actually done anything about all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some well, of it's still two or three years out, you know. Like... Some of it was still two, three years out. Like, you know, here's a new logo. You know, here's a new, you know. Um, like, here's, you know, here's five trailers for stuff that we told you last year about. Mm-hmm. I... F- there's a kind of thing of I, my expectations were actually, they did pretty much what I expected them to do because my expectations were like, expect nothing. I don't know if you remember, I mean, a few months ago, I mean, there's a standing joke now of like, they did this big announcement of the streamer mm-hmm. and they put up this live stream of running water of a, of a stream for four hours. And then they did a little new, a new trailer with Dave Batista. Yeah. And people were thinking, like, they were sat there for four hours waiting for a <laughs> Spider-Man trailer, and everyone going, what a waste. It's like, and just ex- put your expectations yeah. on her. And I think the trouble is with fans as well as expectations can run away with them. Yeah, And expecting a four-hour presentation of what's coming over the next year. And, and like, and uh, the last, the Investor Day was so special because it was for investors, for yeah. shareholders. And it became like this, and it was an amazing event. Disney Plus Day, I think there was a number of things I didn't like about it. I didn't like the presentation style, um, the way they did it, where you had some things being announced on social media, and then they flip you over to Disney Plus for like a four minute Pixar yeah. clip was rubbish, you know, showing us the same clip from Star Wars. From Obi-Wan. There was a lot of missteps. Um, I would have, I'm not necessarily saying they needed to do like a live presentation on like YouTube or something like that. I don't think doing a social media, but they, they said, I, I thought overall there was a lot of nice announcements. Again, it was very US centric. They didn't really kind mm-hmm. of go into too much of the, the star side of things because they didn't want to confuse Americans because that's the, the problem with this whole thing, what they got with this branding right now. Um, but there is, I, I, for me, I thought it was good. I've, it gave everything I wanted. Um, there wasn't a lot of surprises. Yeah. But the trouble is as well of like, you know, if you follow the trades like I do and, you know, you've you got your feet on, you know, you watch, it's like, you know, this movie's being developed. They don't announce it officially till then. Yeah. So you go like the Agatha, um, uh, yeah, the yeah. name was new, but we knew about it a week beforehand. Yeah. So therefore it's like, you know, and it's like, oh, well, well we know this. Yeah, we, we know this, but the general, general mass is done. Yeah. Um, Echo, we'd known about that series for months. You know, this is the thing of like, you know, sometimes we're fans, you know, with leaks and stuff, you, you know, we kind of know stuff beforehand and it t- takes away the excitement a bit. But I, yeah. I I understand why a lot of people were upset with it because I think they were expecting so much. But 
I feel like in yesterday they were just they were a business just screaming yes we're fine we're, we're still making money please don't uninvest you know and I that was I I don't think it could ever match up to investor day yeah well and what's interesting is the investor day obviously the name itself they yeah they're going after who is the shareholders who are, are investing in their company and then Disney plus day I think a lot of people saw it oh they're doing something for the fans well you know the the general fan, if they're not investing, well, they're paying for Disney Plus. They're they're paying to go to the parks, merchandise, things like that, going to the movies. Um, that I I think again, it, it could have been those expectations that people built up that that probably yeah. probably shouldn't have been built up the way that they do. But yeah. that's kind I mean of they what did, fans do. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean they did. I mean you look at like DC fans yeah. fandom. I mean I look at like even E three and the video game things of what happens there. I mean, Disney teamed up with AMC and we're giving away free posters and I yeah. didn't quite get why they did that. And they did a balloon tour. And you've got to also take into the fact that Disney Plus Day, they dropped a load of stuff yeah. on Disney Plus. Yes. Your disadvantage was the week before and the week after, you didn't have anything. But yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. got everything. <laughs> and, but, you know, you know a lot. we, um, uh, and, and incidentally, we were, we were traveling, we were on the road traveling to Walt Disney World on Disney Plus Day. So there was a part of me that's like, I, I want to watch Shang Chi. I want to do like yeah. I had seen it in the theaters, but I want to, I want to do all of these things. I want to watch all of these things. And then there's also a part of me that that morning I saw at in Hollywood Studios they were giving away like mm. the Disney Plus hats and pens yeah. and everything. And I'm like, oh man, I, like we're we're literally on the road, so I'm not watching as much Disney Plus as I would be, but we're not yet at the parks where I could like get all of this yeah. all of this stuff. Um, the Something else that I want to ask um, is um, Bob Iger is, you know, he's stepping down. He has, uh, at this point, I think two or three more weeks. Um, what do you think, what has his influence been on the company, on content? He's been a great creative influence, I think, um, because of his background before he was at Disney. What do you think his influence has been, and especially on Disney Plus? Um, and then, what do you think his retirement will be, um, and, and and Susan Arnold kind of stepping into the that that place that he is? Yeah. Well, see, I'd look at it like if if you look at Disney Plus and you go right, if you take away Bob Iger, you'd only have to Disney. So, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. basically the rest of it. All, all the other five brands wouldn't be there. Yeah. That's basically yeah. the. If you're yeah. looking like Disney Plus, that's the way of his legacy is. You only would have the Disney. Whatever you find in there is all you've got. The yes. rest of it doesn't exist. I think that's that's how I would look at um his legacy as like he you know he picked up Pixar, Star Wars, Marvel, National Geographic, yes. and 20th Century. That was his. That's he just went around with a Hoover with lots of money and picked everything up and also was very good at just kind of saying, go create stuff, go create stuff, yeah. go create stuff. And I, you know, we went through an incredible gen generally, I think we went through an incredible time with it, but there's a lot of negativity to people, you know, them buying Marvel. There's a lot of negativity mm -hmm. to them spending money on all of that stuff. Years later, everyone's like, Oh yeah, yeah it's fine. But I'm still not Disney. And I'm like, well, Disney didn't make Winnie the Pooh or, <laughs> You know, uh, you know, all the princesses were all made up before Disney came along. You yeah. know, that's what Disney's always done is take somebody else's idea and just exploit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, it's like, they're like that's what they've been doing like, all the whole time. All of the princess stories existed before yeah. Disney. Well, I don't think a lot of people think like that. Yeah. Um, and, and on, on that note, I do remember as a kid, um, like a Disney movie would come out and you would see like a, a you'd be like in Walmart or Target or somewhere and see like a version of that movie. And you're like, Oh, someone else made a, like they're making a Disney movie. And it's like, yeah. no, it's like, it's the, these have been, <laughs> these stores have been around for, for a very, very long time. Um, I, I do think it's, it's, it, it's interesting. He is, he, his legacy is he, he's the great um, acquisitionist. Maybe. I don't know. Like yeah. he, he, he expanded things so much. Um, and I think what happened with Netflix um, back in the in 2000s and being a disruptor is what led to kind of the idea for Disney Plus and just 
basically being a disruptor for yourself. So you're not at the whim of someone else. Um, so it will be very, very interesting to see how it moves forward. Um, I also, you know, I think anytime there's a change, people have have questions and, and yeah. what's going to happen and, and some resistance and everything because people are generally resistant to change. Um, but, you know, I, I do think there if you look at the major brands, you look at Pixar, it's it's stable. Uh, it went through, you know, its transition a few years ago with with what happened. Um, it, it's more stable now. Marvel seems more stable. Star Wars seems stable. Star Wars is in that weird area where half the people really, really like it, and half the people like you. Yeah, people are fans, but can't they're they're like can't stand it almost. Yeah, I, I, because I, I they really, want that the the old. Star, yeah, I really know? I don't know. See, I I think because I'm a kid that grew up on the original trilogy of like mm-hmm. I live through the Ewok movies and yeah. I live through the uh, for the for the prequels when everybody hated them. Yeah, and then now they're all revered because oh I grew up with them and it's like I don't know. I mean, for me, it's like it's Star Wars. There's been a lot of bad Star Wars over the years. Of you know, we went 15, 20 years without stuff. It was like normal. Of course, now it's like this constant train of all the rest of it. And it's like, for me, like one series or one movie a year is like, mm, that's great. You know, we went yeah. like 10, 15 years with yeah. that stuff. <laughs> um, so it's fine. You know, and like, we, it's, I don't know. It's, I think there's always this turmoil and a lot of it is, you know, clickbaity stuff because it grabs an audience. Um, I don't know. It's, it is tricky. I mean, there is problems with, I think, the general direction that they've had they may maybe not had this this the thing but i think trying to please everyone you're never going to do that yeah. so it was always a tricky one um yeah i mean we all probably would do something differently with the with the new trilogy but then we all love mandalorian so yeah. you know it'll be interesting to see what happens with boba fett well see and and for me i loved episode seven because it yeah, was awesome. to me Amazing. it was it was like a fan movie yeah. i mean it and you you see everybody in there you see um the 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 original three coming back and episode eight was that's the only episode i've watched one time i i i've watched every other episode multiple multiple times that's the only one i've watched one time i thought episode nine they did they did a pretty good job with episode nine given what they had um i think it's so interesting with star wars that because there were such long gaps between the the original trilogy and then this the sequ- the prequels and then the sequels it's like you have your generational yeah fandom i want and that's different from what's happening with marvel studios right now yeah. however i do wonder because we're we're over 10 years now and we're you know we are out of the infinity saga i wonder how marvel is going to kind of keep up with their fandom and keep the fandom from going the way that star wars fandom did where you have like your divides and these are the best these are the best this this phase is the best i kind of wonder how marvel's going to be able to handle all of that moving into and also and also i I, i'm gonna be honest i do feel like they are putting out too much i do i do honestly think like what five series this year and four movies i i do feel like there is it's too much and i and i know there's this whole big thing of superhero burnout but it's like you know i i love i love it i love it in but you know you think back like the last year we got none mm-hmm. <laughs> and then this year we've had an absolute buffet of yeah. stuff um you know is are we as excited about hawkeye Be- because of everything that's you know i don't know it's a very tricky one um I think Marvel have got to balance it. I am worried about the multiverse because I I hate I hated that in the comic books because you could never understand what was going on and I feel like you're gonna alienate your average Joe because they're not gonna understand what's going on. I, that's my only worry with the multiverse. But you know, hopefully they keep it simple. I I think and I I've made several comments in, in the class that you know when you go to watch um, Spider Man Far From Home or Sp- Spider Man No Way Home or Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Like, I've made several comments that now maybe you have to take a notebook to to, to keep yeah. up with everything, or listen to <laughs> listen to uh, like spoiler reviews multiple times. To yeah. make that's kind of what that's kind of what I do a lot is is I'll listen to spoiler reviews multiple times to make sure that I'm understanding everything that's going on. So I do think it is it's 
it, it could get very, very mm. confusing. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I know a lot of it, or I don't know if a lot, it seems like kind of a lot of what is going on right now is um, kind of started with the success of uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse um, yeah. that, you know, people like that. People responded to it well. It is one movie um, compared to now you're going to have multiple projects that are going to deal with all this. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I also, I also feel the multiverse is a way of kind of turning the MCU into this never ending thing because you can change the actors easier. You can mm -hmm. do stuff. It turns it into like a, a franchise of the universe rather than they can do stuff a little bit and go, oh, this isn't a parallel universe. And they can have a different actor and they can do... It, I think they were maybe getting a bit too worried of people getting too attached to a particular actor. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, look how many Batmans we've had. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, we don't associate that with Batman the same way because we've seen so many versions of him. But if they try and brought in a new Iron Man, we'd be like, no, no, no you, you can only have one. Yeah. Well, we, why have we got six Batman, but we can't have six Iron Man? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that, you go back to what happened in the comics. That's essentially why they were doing that in the comics as well, so because they had different creators and yeah. they had, and then they could, introduce different characters to sell different merchandise and, and things like that um so it, it it is it's all really really interesting and to wrap up um because i i could i could talk all day about <laughs> this and just kind of listen and, and 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 say something and then and then find out that I, i'm incorrect in what i'm saying um but uh to to wrap up um i said we we have those kind of rapid questions um and since we're talking about disney plus i wanted to get some of your rapid questions on that so we'll start with recommendations mm -hmm. and so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask for different genres and if you could give one or two or three if it's too difficult um movies or series that people would that are interested in these genres should watch mm -hmm. on disney plus um and and it, it could be Disney Plus star, which would be in the United yeah. States, Disney Plus yeah. and Hulu. Um, so what would be a recommendation for people who are um, sci-fi fans? Sci-fi, I'll be honest, the right stuff was a yes. really, really great series. I'm really disappointed they didn't return that one. That was one of my, that's probably one of my, one of the best series they made. It just doesn't fit on Disney Plus where it, when it came out. Um, and obviously sci-fi, you, you, you can't really go wrong with The Mandalorian. I mean, you yeah. just, you can't go too wrong with that one at all. And I'm glad you mentioned the right stuff because I remember the last time we spoke that we talked a little bit about that and the right stuff is an amazing, I've watched it multiple times. It's very great. And it is that when we talked about the more mature content. That's what it is. Yeah. And, and it was, it, you know, it was, it, it was something you would watch on AMC yeah. or FX or something like that. Um, and it was a really, really entertaining series. Um, the uh, for marvel fans it's something they should watch on disney plus and actually i, I think for, for me i mean obviously the series of everything for, um i would probably say you know the what if is maybe some of the stuff sort of watch because i think that's really going to like branch out into other areas in the future um to give it a go give it a mm -hmm. go um see if you like the animation because you know a lot of people only like the live action um so that on there um I'd also say, you know, give give some of the um, older shows a bit of a go. You mm -hmm. know, things like uh, The Runaways was a show that I watched. And Cloak and Dagger were like ones were like, oh, these are a little bit different. A little bit like, you know, not as... Cause it, yeah, they're not on the same level as the Marvel ones, but they're still fun. They're still a yeah. fun kind of side on Because it's easy just to say, well, watch you just watch the MCU in order and that's you sorted. So. <laughs> yeah. The um, one thing, one show here... Um, that I watched on Hulu was I really enjoyed Modoc. Um, it was something yeah, very, I wasn't very so keen different. on that one. That was that was different, and it was because um, you know it was kind of the different animation style, and I think yeah. it was Adult Swim. I think yeah. is the people. Who, yeah, um, it was it was entertaining for for mm -hmm. what it was. Do you think that you mentioned what if? Do you think that um, some of those are some of those stories are tying into what's going to happen in live action? Do you think Marvel's going to get to a point where if you're a Marvel fan, you need to be watching live action? You need to be keeping up on animated and possibly even you need to be keeping up on some of these other mediums that are all going to tie into what we think of as the MCU. 
I I don't know if they're going to do it. I think it'll be the opposite way around where they'll extend it a little bit and they can kind of tell some stories that they wouldn't look like zombies might be one that you can do separately that would be too expensive to do um, in live action kind of thing. So they can do some other stories. I mean, DC has been doing it for a long time with their animated movies. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of success with that. Um, so I think it just opens up to some more stories. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I don't, uh, Modoc wasn't the best. I'm waiting to watch Hit Monkey. It got delayed um, from yeah. arriving on Disney Plus. It should have been out um, earlier this last month, but it just didn't turn up one day. Um, so that's one. Yeah. So that I, I'm, I'd like to see them go in that direction because I mean, adult animation is a massive thing for Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for somebody, just general originals on Disney Plus. What would be uh, your your recommendation for someone? Right now, I'd say um, discarding like the Marvel and the Star mm-hmm. Wars side of things. Um, I really feel like Hulu have had a and Star have had a massive. They've had some great shows um, for everyone, and, and there's more adults. So if you say like, if I was recommending to you now, I'd be saying well, only murders in the building. Watch Dope Sick. Um, you know, those would be two ones that would stand out. You know, those kind of high-end dramas that you know there's not a huge amount of them on hulu um, i mean i thought love victus season two was a massive improvement once they kind of knew that they weren't making it for disney plus um so those two would be the, the main two i would recommend okay. right now if you if you were here in the uk and like and a friend got disney plus I'd be going, those are the two originals you should be watching okay okay um for um but people with children children's series or animated movies what would be your recommendation for them um i, think it, I mean it depends on on the, sort of the age brackets i mean there's some the ones on disney plus that just seem to be just you just the kids seem to be just consuming on mass things like bluey yeah mickey mouse clubhouse they just seem to be so my nephews are absolutely loving spidey and his amazing friends yes. right now yes. they are absolutely addicted to that show um so those are the kind of the like the maybe the the younger sort of five-year-olds i'd say you know if you're like 10 12 13 try out visions try out star wars visions mm-hmm. it's a little bit more mature but it's um a lot of fun mm-hmm. you know what if would again be that kind of slightly one and also check out the uh, 1990s x-men series because there's going to be a new yeah, version yeah. Uh, revival so yeah i mean it's a little bit older now but it's they're bringing it back because yeah. it's it was so good and that's how we got introduced to the x-men um so that would be uh, another one Kind of an older one to watch okay the last recommendation and there, there's a two or three other questions but last recommendation for people who are fans of the disney parks and or the walt disney studio because they've had they have some really good originals with those yeah i mean i'd say like i mean imagineering story is is yeah. probably the best documentary of all it is but behind the attraction is mm-hmm. better if you've got a maybe a slightly lower uh, attention span if you find like really long documentaries a little mm-hmm. bit tough behind the attractions a little bit more nippy a little bit more bitey you get little sneak peeks of it um so that one's pretty good for that one but um, the imagining story is still kind of one of my favorite sh- things as a park fan you have got the animal kingdom one so if you like at the animal kingdom theme park try that one out but i found that on a little i think secrets of the zoo is slightly a better show than the the animal kingdom one um yeah um uh, one that i that i actually really enjoyed was um uh and now i I, i'm drawing a blank on it with um it was uh where they would go and they look uh, prop culture oh that was a a great show that was a great that that was a really good one um i hope they do more of that one because that was really and you'd just be like this makes some sense you've got these because they recently put a d23 like through the archives on yes it came on just came on and uh, to be honest i watched it this is not as good as props prop culture did this far better <laughs> i mean it was they... you know prop culture was i when i was watching that i was thinking like well this is this is kind of like prop culture just yeah they're they're visiting kind of all of these different areas and it, it i liked it that they went to different areas and, and obviously i going think they were being that, filmed around the same it. time so they were okay i did they wouldn't necessarily know what were but prop coach was i mean i hope they do more of that one because that just yeah. seems like a no-brainer for them you know they've got the biggest collection of stuff of like they got all these people on hand just and then you know the disney love making behind the scenes yeah. documentary so why not just i mean yeah so that 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 there was good if you like if you like going behind the scenes that one was definitely a good one 
The um and and there there was one more that that I had written down. Um, and this would be kind of like a not scripted series, adult, um, either documentaries or reality series that people could watch. Um, I'm gonna say I think it's the the Emilio show. Um, okay. So this one is all about a group of um, a family of TikTok. Two girls have become massive on TikTok. And it's on Hulu in the US and they're here. And now I went into this thinking, it's like, oh, this is like the Cardassians kind of thing. Like, well, I don't. And I watched it and it was quite enlightening because of, they had such an explosion in fame of going like from, you know, just a girl in her bedroom to suddenly 100 million followers and the press following her. And I mean, they were showing some real like you know suicidal things there was the, the the pressure of being really famous and being on social but you know and I it was a, it was done in a very different way I I mm-hmm. was going in and going well I'm not really and I I, I watched a few preview episodes they gave me and when they gave I was like, I'm actually going to watch the rest when they came out because it was like it was quite it was something I wasn't expecting it yeah. was, I think maybe you know again you know being used to social media and stuff it was quite interesting watching somebody basically collapsing from the pressure yeah. and the trolls and the, it, I wasn't expecting that from that show. I, I was expecting, you know, a fluffy teenage thing going, oh, this is going to be rubbish. But they weren't quite, they, you know, they were in tears. They had psychotherapists involved. It was like, so if you've ever, if you're interested in like, you know, the, the other side of social media, then that, that was actually quite a, an interesting one to go okay. into. What, what was um, it called again? The D'Amelio show. And okay. um, it's like Charlie D'Amelio and Dixie D'Amelio, I think. I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a surprise one. Wasn't yeah. expecting that one. Um, I don't think what other one. Oh, The Pride was a really okay. interesting documentary as well. That um, it was on on Hulu. It was I think it was an FX one. And it was just follow, like following um like gay rights and it was really in depth. And it was quite a, a history lesson for me of like American history. So it was, yeah. I, I thought that one was quite a I remember going, I'm, I'm going to like this one in like six episodes in and going, oh, well, that was really, really, and I kind of had to okay. concentrate on it. Okay. Um, r- real quick, um, of what you have, what you've watched that is not coming back, and maybe you've already answered it. Yeah. What, what's one or two things you would like to see come back to Disney Plus or them do a- additional seasons of? I mean, the right stuff is an easy, easy kind of um, thing. I mean, at the minute, they've not really announced a lot of cancellations. There's not yeah. really been a lot. There's, I think we've got like right stuff, possibly Turner and Hooch. Um, we don't yet know on some of the other ones like Encore and stuff, but they've been quite, everyone that's been kind of successful, because we're only in year two, they've, you know, you know, they've, everything that's been successful, they've kind of come in. So the right stuff feels like one that they should have kind of given, a, to me, it felt like they put that out at the wrong time time they put it out there and like going, here's a grown-up series on a network with nothing else for adults and yeah. then didn't promote it maybe well enough and then kind of go well it didn't do very well no well, why would anyone know it was there they weren't looking for that on disney plus i think maybe now it might do better had it done it you know and i don't know it's, it's a kind of one of those things i really wish they it, it, it suffered i think from being, it's like I think when I put it on, my wife said to me, "She goes, this is like a proper TV show." <laughs> it's yeah. just like it's like, yeah, this is this is the thing. What would your um, recommendation be, just for general, like if you're talking to people at Disney Plus, what would be your general recommendation moving forward for subscribers? Right now, I mean, I, I'm keeping in, in mind. I would say you need to look at two things obviously investing in original content is important but also using the content you've already got um getting you know start spending some money on restoring or getting some of your old stuff re- dig- you know ready for disney plus get an old show or an old movie go into the 20th century library do start dropping stuff like weekly or any one one thing or one one series a month and just start like utilizing that out you know go mm-hmm. into the 50s or 60s because that's an audience i don't think is getting a lot of attention right now mm-hmm. because it's all on new or you know like our generation our stuff's pretty much all on there some of the stuff a little bit younger than us isn't on there yet so like i say look put a team together and give them a budget and say look we want you to kind of get as much library stuff together as possible and i would almost say like maybe make a library team and go like, like your job is to give us stuff yeah not just you know not just stuff off the television but kind of you know go in and try and find what we own what we haven't got you know sort out the rights and 
that would be one way of kind of like exp- use what you own. You know, it's like it's a kind of thing like you've got a whole shed and attic full of stuff upstairs, yeah. <laughs> um, and you keep making all this new stuff. But it's like you've got some stuff upstairs yeah. that would be great. So that would be one one thing. Another thing would be like start looking at um, but if you want to stay at TV fourteen, fine. You know, if you don't want to go above that, fine. Use it. Start going to that level. You know, start offering. You know, maybe start nicking some shows for maybe C. You know, start, you know, something like the Wonder Years could have been a really interesting Disney Plus original. You know, mm-hmm. you could have done something like that, or you could have start, you know, you could have done things like that. Start using your ABC library a little bit better. Yeah. I think uh, ABC, like ABC, you know, shows that you'd put on at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you know, seven o'clock in the evening, that the whole family sit down together are family viewing. Mm-hmm. So I'd be like, start using, you know, I don't necessarily say like, yeah, get Hulu in and just start small. Just maybe start that little creep of more family friendly stuff, you know, TV shows that families watch together, you know, and that those would be my things. And like, yeah, investing in originals. I mean, I'd love to see them some more, some more drama series that aren't based on Marvel and Star Wars would be nice. Um, But just use, you know, you've got all these studios making TV series start utilizing it and maybe another thing would be just make national geographic and disney channel day and day, day and net or next day releases for everything okay do what yeah. you do just just make it simple just make it a simple just rule of it airs on the disney channel it's available the next day or is available the same day on disney plus just keep yeah. it simple you know utilize yeah. that that content that you're making weekly okay um and the last rapid question um in 2022 what are you most looking forward to um I'd probably say, I know like Moon Knight and Miss Marvel are series I'm really interested in because I don't really, I've, I mean, if, like Moon Knight, I don't really know anything about. I've never read a Moon Knight comic book. So therefore, it's like a brand new character. So I'm like, oh, that could be interesting because I don't know nothing about it. So that one's definitely picking up. Andor is going to be another mm-hmm. Star Wars series that I'm looking forward to. I'm probably looking forward to that more than Kenobi. Because it's like well, we know what happens with Kenobi. Um, well, and or um, you know, that could be an interesting you know side story. Um, moving on from there. Um, just think, yeah, I think those are the two ones that sort of stood out um okay. from 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 the Disney side. Okay. Yeah, and so um we we talked longer than I told you we would. Um it it it, it happens when <laughs> when like I said, I had questions written down and we got to most of them, but a lot of it, we went um, off tangents because of interesting <laughs> things that you said. So um, thank you so much for doing this again. Um, how can people keep up with what you're doing and, and follow along with your content? So they go over to um, what's on Disney plus.com. You can then follow us on like Twitter, Facebook. We've got a Facebook group. You know, you can find me on YouTube. You know, I'm doing videos every day, giving you all the latest Disney plus news. Um, you know, we do a weekly podcast with me and James and we just talk about all the, all, we review all the shows and all the originals that come out and all the news and stuff. So yeah, so we're literally daily. you got content for me. I don't shut up about it. <laughs> it's, and I, I'll tell everybody, it's great, great content. Um, and especially if um, I see it on social media, that's how I get most of the things um, through Facebook. But the 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 reviews um, that Roger puts out are are they're on point, or at least, or at least I agree with them. Um, they, and, and, and you don't shy away from what, what are, what are the good things about it? What are some of the weaknesses about it? Uh, you don't shy away from that. It's not, you know, like just fluff that's being put out. Um, yeah, if that's it's how fluff, great I will tell you. <laughs> and so yeah. it, it's, it, it's really, really good content for everybody. So again, thank you for this. Um, uh, uh, Maybe this time next year, if not sooner, we'll, we'll check back in and see um, how everything is going again. So thank you so much, Roger. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.